Hello, hello. I'm here to share with you how to program a Hunter node. This one is a four station, but the same programming applies for the one, two, four, or six station nodes made by Hunter. Cool thing about these things is that they are battery operated. You spin off the backside, put in one nine volt battery, and this baby can run for roughly six months or longer, depending on the load on that battery and the quality of that battery. You can also put two batteries in to give you a little backup and extended life. You can also buy a different back plate that actually connects to a solar panel that Hunter makes. It's a little pricey. It's about 150 bucks retail for that solar panel thing, a little bit cheaper if you're a contractor. But that would then give you pure solar, battery-free operation for this device. And there's still going to be a battery in there because that's what the solar panel is charging, but you get my drift. So this cool little puck comes with a nifty little rubber cover, goes in, inside the box, you can install this cute little clip. So then that can go in and snap right on there. You got a bunch of different wires coming out. You have two sensor wires that you can connect. This one is actually connected to a rain gauge, a mini click that's just down the way up on the hillside right about there on that post so then you can have it actually do smart sensing you could do and then a soil monitor sensor as well if you wanted to get really crazy with it and that's the exciting part of all that what else we got actually sorry i apologize i think there's only one sensor Eh, I'll double check the manual and then I'll let you guys know if I'm right or wrong on that. Next step is you have your communal, the common wire. That one is going there. It's white. All the blacks coming off of these DC solenoids, which are not AC solenoids because you have to actually buy a new solenoid. And Hunter will not take these back or give you any credit for them, but you can give them back to them so that they can make more money. It's kind of nice of them. Wish they'd have a better rebate program because I'm left with about. 40 different solenoids that I don't get any value for even though I paid around 25 22 to 25 bucks for each one of these little doohickeys those turn on the solenoid and the valve depending on the sensor one two three or four that you're using or the valve that you're programming to so we have one we have actually two that are loose right now we have number one which is way over here because it's actually not going to anything it's an extra valve that we installed that's not set. And then we only have two and three as the other two, as the other two valves. So, sorry, I'm getting text messages and I'm trying to make this video. Anyway, what I wanted to go over with you guys is how to actually program this beast. So, the quality part is it's simple yet also complicated. What we had was an owner who's been playing around and dinking with the stuff we think because one of my sprayers on this install was set at how many hours? Six hours for a sprayer. So not really sure how that happened. So anyway, the way this works is that you have programs for your program timers. You have an up and down selector and left and right back and forward advance and you have the main program button that basically turns on the beast so it's 841 roughly a.m sure press it one more time now you get into date and time set you go up and down and change the years you go over we are now in date so it's a month yes this is the sixth the seventh of june number six a.m p.m it is 841 842 now yep i'll accept all that and just press the center button to move on. All right, now here are your start times. Now I'm way over here on the lower terrace, and for program A, you see it up here, we have four start times that you can do. So the first start time is 4 a.m. Yes, I have four, there we go, 4 a.m. for A. So sweet. Oh, I lost it, that will happen to you. You go back to 4 a.m. I'm gonna advance through, but wait, I don't need two start times for 4 a.m., so I'm not sure what's going on with either my guys or the clients of why they programmed it like this. So I'm actually going to have to 
sit here and wait and wait and it takes forever for them to kick into the faster speed i would like hunter to be able to actually put that in a little bit sooner so anyway you got to get to the witching hour before it turns off we'll move over again we don't need it to start again five minutes later for the run times i'll make it so that you can actually see the display a little bit better so again i have to hold it for quite some time the reason why we use nodes here is because it was going to be cheaper than running a bunch of wire everywhere, even though these babies are pretty expensive on their own. And then all this brouhaha of programming them time-wise. So again, that one's off. We're going to go to 4. That one should definitely be off. So again, we have one start time at 4 a.m., and there should be no other start times for program A. Then we'll move to program B. There should be zero on this because I didn't use program B for any of my stuff because I was differentiating between spray and drip. And I'm going to go to program C. And there should be one for 6 a.m. Boop, 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 boop. 6 a.m. on program C. Great. Now we're going to go through it. Should be no more. Awesome. Perfect. There's only A, B, and C programs. There's not a D program. Now we go back to our program button. Jump over. Now we're in runtime mode. Now this number actually references which station and valve you're on. So before, on the first one for the start times that's actually how many start times you get and you get four so and again if you wait too long you go back so let's start at a so a for station one it's an extra we do not need anything so we should just run through and see that station one program a should have nothing on any of the programs nope it should have nothing on any of the programs Again, the excitement of having people have access to programmers. So, let me back up. Okay. So, on station one, all of our programs should be zero. Because station one is just an extra valve in the box. Great. Now, let's go to station two. Station two is... Drip. Do I have it on drip for station C? I do. Look, station C, program C needs to be on drip. All right, now we got to go back. Okay, C, one, station one should have nothing. Station two should have an hour. Yes, I do want it to be an hour now. I have it for 50 minutes. I'll let it be an hour, so I'll change that number when I'm done doing all this programming. So station three should have nothing for C, great. Now we go back to station three, which is a sprayer in there. Lo and behold, sprayer, sprayer, great. Let's just cycle through so we don't lose it, so I have to go back and forth. Four has nothing, four should have nothing. This tells you the total run time for station A. So let's go back to A. We have 102. I don't want 102 for station two because station two is supposed to be our drip. So I got to back off station two, back down to zero. But on program A for station three, no, 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 no. See how easy it is to set it to six? Look at that. That's basically probably what happened to someone when they were resetting it or myself. I have to take blame sometimes, um, is setting it to six hours. So it's pretty easy thing to do so maybe it'd be nice if you could actually not go back to six or who knows anyway so now station three for 20 minutes i wanted to bump that up to 50 minutes because i'm actually going to set this just to do it once a week and these are mp rotators these are not um, traditional spray heads so they're micro precision and they're going to work all right great do we have anything in b for anything nope total runtime is zero and then we can check out total runtime for C, should be in one hour. Great. A, one hour. Sorry, I'm just going to do this before I actually forget. One hour. Great. Awesome. So I just hit the program button. Now I'm in the date time. So the date time is, again, based on our program that we've got here. So I'm going to go through programs. Program B is currently saying it's going to be on three days. C is saying that if I move the cursor over, 
So it's only running on Thursday. That's why it's marked. So if I press up, it's going to mark it every day, every cursor day I'm on it. If I press up or down, it'll turn it on or off. So I actually just want this bad boy to run once. And I've got it set for Thursday on the drip. So I'm going to leave that. That's correct with what I've got programmed. See our little battery indicator. So I'm going to go back to A just to see what it's saying. So A on my notes... I was gonna actually make this just be 50 minutes on Friday. So let's turn off Tuesdays. So I'm gonna go down. And let's jump over to B since we know nothing's on it and I can cycle through all the different programs that we do have here. So you have interval, which just means every seven days you could do it. You could go back, you could go through and set every even day. You could set every odd day. You could say every odd integer and then you could go through and turn on and off various days as you need to um, and again just pre keep pressing left now you're back at your interval day and the little marker down here will tell you which one you're on and then even I've never actually really played with the evens or the odds too often, so you'll have to play around with like what you want to be doing with that. And then again, we're on B, so I don't really care. So I'm gonna press this. This is your seasonal adjust, so you could raise or lower it based on what you need to do based on your water calculations. You can't program it per month, which would be nice, just so you could set it and forget it, but that's currently how it is. So you have to manually come out here and adjust your seasonal adjust. And then we press the last one. This is if the this is the rain delay. So you can set it for 99 days. Or if you have the rain sensor connected, it'll just work automatically. And sorry, I believe that it's just one connector that you can do for the sensor because you close the loop by connecting it because when this comes this yellow is all solid and looped together so it's basically closing the circuit to show that it's that it's fe getting fed the information and then when the sensor for the rain click turns on it actually breaks the line and goes oh we shouldn't be running the water of the system and that's all the stations so again that's your rain delay and if i want to manually turn on let's say number two i press and hold that until i get the little cute hand right there and it's gonna run for 15 minutes on station one. But of course, station one is connected to nothing, so it's not actually gonna even turn on, so let's turn it off. So I'll turn it off, and it'll give you a cute little timer, and go dink. So let's actually do that again, but this time we'll do it on station two. And then we'll go over one to two, go up to five for eight minutes, and it does its little rundown thing. And now, station two is running, and you can faintly hear the drip lines pressurizing. Again, to turn it off, just wiggle it down to zero. She'll do her timer and she squeaks off. So hopefully that was helpful for the Hunter node. There's a lot more nuance to it. Read the manual. I think you'll get a kick out of it at some point once you're done bashing your head into the ground going through the system. But they are pretty simple once you do get them down. Hopefully that was helpful. And again, this is T. Gray from Ecology Artisans doing landscape design and install with an ecological and holistic approach here in San Diego County, California. Peace.